welcome you, welcome you to this evening's candidate forum. Um, this is an important evening for voters. You will get to hear the views, values, and the plans of your Bergen County freeholder candidates and use this information to help you cast your votes. Many um, thanks to the candidates for making the time to join us this evening. And also my gratitude to Barbara King, president of the Legal Women Voters, event moderator Ann Armstrong and the other sponsoring agencies for partnering with the YWCA of Northern New Jersey to create this opportunity for voters and candidates. It's important for the YWCA of Northern New Jersey to participate in tonight's event. In December of 2019, our national organization, YWCA USA, released Why Women Vote 2020. This national survey of women in the United States collected information on women's priorities across demographically with the goal of putting women's voices at the forefront in 2020. The survey provided insight to the shared concerns of women across demographic groups and areas of concern such as gun violence, affordable health care, aging family members, family income, and climate change. To support this effort locally throughout 2020, the YWCA of Northern New Jersey has planned and executed an intensive effort to engage voters, especially women. And in addition to playing an instrumental role in spreading the word about the census through our resources and partnerships and a voter registration campaign, we dedicated time to the top five concerns of women and invited people to join us on our YWTV Facebook Live platform to share the information um, from experts. Um, we had segments that focused on um, key facts and information for voters about issues and information they should be thinking of for the upcoming election. So tonight's an important part of that process um, and an opportunity, as I said earlier, to hear from the candidates on these and other key issues. Um, before we move on with the forum, I would just like to take a moment to note that effective January 1st, the name of chosen freeholder changes to county commissioner. Chosen freeholder, a term which dates back to the 15th century, was changed since it was noted that it goes back to an age when only white male property owners could hold public office. As an organization whose mission is to eliminate racism and empower women, we stand united with this title change and continuing to erase terminology and practices that support oppression and systemic racism. I encourage all of you to use this evening to get educated on these candidates and from here to continue your research on all the other races and trainings on the ballot and the important issues to see. All races and choices on all levels are important. This is your opportunity to make sure your voice is heard and that your values are represented. And a special call to women this year with the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment giving women the right to vote. It is important to remember that your right to vote was hard won and it is always important. And with that, I would like to introduce you to Barbara King. She is the president of the Bergen County chapter of the League of Women Voters. Barbara has lived in Paramus, New Jersey with her husband of almost 50 years and raising her three children there. She's been a member of the League of Women Voters for over 30 years and has served in a number of leadership positions throughout her time there. She also is an active member of the Friends of Paramus Library and her local synagogue. And now, Barbara King. Thank you so much, Helen. I'm pleased to be here and pleased that we could have this forum uh, available to all the residents in the county. I'd like to welcome you um, to our first virtual candidates forum for freeholder and perhaps the last, but <laughs> who knows? I would especially like to thank our four freeholder candidates for their participation. I'd like to thank our league uh, moderator, Ann Armstrong, our local league volunteers who have devoted themselves to this effort, our co-sponsor, the YWCA Northern New Jersey, and you, the public, for your interest and involvement, as well as the probing questions you have submitted for the candidates. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. We work to increase understanding of public policy issues and influence public policy 
through education and advocacy. We welcome women, men, and students as active members. Tonight's forum will follow league policy of focusing on issues and not personalities. The moderator will not allow any abusive, personalized, or irrelevant questions or remarks. We welcome the opportunity to hear about the candidates' policy positions tonight. I will also double as our timekeeper tonight. So candidates, please keep an eye on the countdown clock I will hold up to the camera for all to see. When it reaches zero, you should finish your sentence. I'll now introduce our moderator, Ann Armstrong, who will explain the format and facilitate the question and answer period. Ms. Armstrong is a resident of Somerset County. She's a longtime league member who has served in many leadership positions in her local league, and at one point was treasurer on the state league board. Anne has been a league trained moderator for over 25 years. Thank you very much for being with us, Anne, and you have the floor. Thank you, Barbara. <clears throat> Welcome. We have with us today the four candidates for Bergen County Freeholder. Before introducing the candidates, I'd like to explain the format for this evening. Each candidate will give a brief opening statement. After the opening statements, the candidates will be asked pre-screened submitted questions in rotating order. All candidates will have the opportunity to answer each question. Each candidate will be given a set time to answer each question. After the question and answer period, the candidates will give a brief closing statement. The candidates for Bergen County Freeholder are Ramon Hache, Ronald Kistner, Simone Sigonis, and Joan Voss. We will begin with the opening statement of Simone Sigonis. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having us. It's an honor to be here with my distinguished panelists, um, and I'm sure I can speak for all of them. Um, we thank Barbara King and the League of Women Voters of Burden County, as well as Helen Archantu and the YWCA of Northern New Jersey, along with the co-sponsors, the National Council of Jewish Women, the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey, the Network for Republic, Responsible Public Policy and Vote 411. I am a practicing architect and I have been involved with civic service for 27, 23 years, first on the zoning board, then on the planning board and as a three-term council member. My advocacy stems from the fact of my skills as an architect, which I supplement, supplemented with a law degree recently I feel that community engagement is the way to best address many, many of our policy issues. And I look forward to working with the team of the board. Thank you. The next opening statement will be from Ramon Hache. Good evening and uh, thank you to Barbara King and the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. Over the last eight months, Bergen County, like many communities across our nation, has faced a challenge like no other. And I hope everyone watching this evening is home, safe, and my heart goes out to the families of those who have lost loved ones to this terrible virus. A little bit about me, my wife Tina and I are the proud parents of six young children. And as a dad, I've always tried to set the example to my kids that true leadership is focused on helping people, not politics. That's how I govern as mayor of Ridgewood. And I hope to draw from my experience to work alongside Joan and the Freeholder Board and make sure all Bergen County families have strong opportunities and a bright future with excellent schools, thriving businesses and good jobs, beautiful parks and safe communities. I look forward to discussing tonight the ways we can take on the challenges faced by the people in our county. And I hope I can count on your support to represent you on the Board of Chosen Freeholders. Thank you. <laughs> Next opening statement from Joan Voss. Thank you. Good evening and thank you to the League of Women Voters for help hosting this important forum. 
I've done at least 10 of these and I can honestly say I never imagined doing this virtually. <laughs> it's been an honor to represent the people of Bergen County and I'm proud of how our team has worked together to eliminate veteran homelessness, protect seniors from fraud and abuse, upgrade our parks and so much more. Of course, those who know me know well that my passion is education. Bergen County has some of the best schools in the entire country, and I focused on how we can make them even better. I was an educator for more than 41 years, and we often say a teacher's work is never done. We need to keep Bergen County moving in the right direction, especially at this crucial time of COVID-19. I look forward to sharing how Ramon and I will work together to strengthen the quality of life to all the residents of Bergen County. Thank you. We will continue with Ronald Kistner. Okay, I can go. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ron Kistner. I am proud to be uh, currently serving my third term as a Hasbrook Heights Council member. My current commissionships on the council are finance and fire commissioner. I, all, I have also served on the DPW Recreation Police uh, as commissioners as well. Employment right now, I'm currently the Administrator, Officer, and Director of Operations in the truly wonderful community of Allendale, New Jersey. I've been in that position since January of 2015. In my employment prior to coming to Allendale, I had the honor of being the Bergen County Parks Director. I'm so proud of the projects that I accomplished and the uh, acknowledgments I have received during that time. One of those acknowledgments was the uh, NAACP Community Service Award winner in 2014. Now on to the really important stuff. I've been blessed to be married to my amazing wife, Murphy, for 35, almost 36 years next month. Uh, I have two wonderful grown children who I cannot be prouder, Amanda Menavini, who's a school teacher, and Bobby, a.k.a. Coach Bob, known to his players. Uh, I, and most importantly, I became a grandfather for the first time in a little over two years ago, Mackenzie Rose. And anyone who hasn't been a grandparent yet, and it, it's better than people say this. Thank you. All right. Okay, we will now have the questions submitted. Uh, the first question, and this goes, Ramon, you'll answer it first. What do you consider the most important challenges facing Bergen County? Well, I mean, Bergen County has, um, was the first county of New Jersey to be hit by the pandemic. Uh, the, had the first death in the state uh, obviously due to our close proximity to, to, to New York City. Uh, since that time, our leaders have worked to ensure that we receive the, the needed federal funding to assist the residents of Bergen County. We need to get Bergen County residents and businesses and families back on their feet. I think that is the biggest challenge right now. You know, we've all seen the, the devastating impact that the pandemic has had uh, on everyone, you know, from our personal lives, in, in terms of the separation from our loved ones and not being able to travel and having restrictions. Uh, to the challenges of being uh, homeschooling uh, our children. I, I can tell you, again, having uh, six young children, uh, it, it is quite a task. Uh, and I think that's really right now what, we, what, what needs to happen. We need to get through this. We need to get out of it. And with the right leadership, uh, we have uh, much brighter days ahead to look forward to. Okay. Thank you. Joan Voss. Uh, I agree with Ramon in many respects, but we have been very proactive and we have received $162 million from the federal government agency through the, for the CARES Act and HUD has spent at least $7 million to help our low income families. One of the things that we, as Ramon said, we were the epicenter of uh, Bergen County. The first case was in my town of Fort Lee. And uh, one of the things that we've made a priority is to send out mobile testing centers to as many communities as request them. We also have a great partnership with Newbridge Medical Center where uh, people can go and get tested. And uh, it is so important that uh, everybody gets tested and basically tries to get back on the right track. I think we've tried to assist all 70 towns in Bergen County and we, uh, our county executive has been very, very much in the forefront. And many of the things he has instituted in Bergen County have been replicated in other counties. Thank you. Ronald? Kistner. Thank you. Uh, I, again, I agree with Ramon and, and Joan as well. 
uh, one thing I think the county's facing that the whole country and state is facing, and that is people have to go back to the tradition of getting along with each other. Um, the anger and the um, just not treating others the way you want to be treated um, has to stop. If, if we're going to accomplish all the things we do need to accomplish that have caused that have been caused by the COVID and other other reasons, um, we need to start treating people um, the way we the way we were brought up and taught to to treat mm -hmm. others. Uh, I uh, I agree. I think Jim Tedesco has done a terrific job as county executive. I consider Jim a friend. Um, if I got on the uh, if I was lucky enough to become a county commissioner, it'd be counterproductive to be just because I'm a Republican, he's a Democrat. Once this is done, you know, we run as Republican Democrats, but once we're elected, we work for the people and that's to work together with Jim and the other uh, commissioners or freeholder members to do what's right for the residents of Bergen County and uh, do the best I can. And uh, that's it's very simple. And I think just the way we have to approach everything in these days. Thank you. All right. Next is Simone Sigonis. I, I agree with my colleagues. I think a lot of issues are facing our county at this point in time. I can only tell you what I know from my perspective. Um, one of the biggest challenges I think has been for our schools um, and our youth and in coping with this pandemic. It is a new way of living and I think everyone is trying to team together to provide the best uh, for our, our youngsters. Um, it's wonderful that I can pass parents now and they're going to pick up their kids from soccer practice. So I, I think things are trying to resume back to normalcy and I commend each town, each municipality for you know and enforcing that that the kids can be back in school safely. As an architect, I know we can equip the buildings to, to do so, but I'm, I'm seeing it from my perspective um, in a local issue, but I, I, I would also advocate for better transportation. And, and I think all of our, all of us, you know, can work together, like Ron said, and, and unify our, our resources and our, and our perspectives to enable us to overcome this pandemic. We can only fight it together. Okay, thank you. The next question is the Bergen County Special Services School District consists of schools for students with disabilities, vocational schools, and magnet schools for those with high capability. Do you feel the county funds spent in support of these schools is money well spent? Explain, please. Joan, you're up first. My favorite topic, okay, I am so, so proud of Bergen County. We have the Academy, which is fantastic, the Teterboro Technical School. I am pushing very, very hard for vocational schools, and I wish that we would have more vocational schools. In We need to teach kids trades like electrician and plumbing and things of that sort, but very important because so many children have special needs, and I'm a very big advocate of helping those on the autism spectrum, so we need more schools that have specialized teachers to take care of this. But I think the crown jewel in Bergen County is Bergen Community College. I mean, I have visited just about all the um, community colleges in the state, and ours is by far wonderful and expanding. And they're concentrating on teaching people professions that are very, very necessary, particularly in the healthcare professions. They do some wonderful things out there. Um, I'm a cheerleader for education. I love it. I, I just can't. To me, education is the key to everything. It opens up the world. And if everybody loved education and was taught to love it, what a wonderful world we would live in. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Ronald Kistner. Thank you. Um, and again, I agree, I agree with Joan. The education is the basis of everything uh, for success for our young people. But I, college, and I said, I've, I've coached uh, for many years. I've been ran many youth sports programs throughout Bergen County. Um, not every child is needs college. Um, so, you know, and they need to have the opportunity to become plumbers, electricians, learn trades. And, and the diversity of our schools have to compare with our diversity of our children and, and for the education. Um, the, you know, the high end, there has to be opportunities for everyone to have the, you know, capabilities of doing the best they can. Uh, I agree the Bergen County educational system 
is outstanding. My my daughter is a is a, a, a math teacher with a master's. Uh, so I definitely understand the importance of education. And if I ever forget, she reminds me of it. Um, but the, the opportunities have to be there. And I think job at, our job as commissioners or field as commissioners is to listen to our educators um, and, and be there to support them. You know, we'll ask questions, but you know, they're the ones who, they're, I, I always look, I don't need to know everything I say. I need to put people around me that do know. And the experts with the educational system, they, they tell me, I will ask my questions. Um, you know, uh, uh, someone having like, like a Joan, is, all those years experience is wonderful. You know, I don't need to know everything. I need to have people around me who I can go to and get those answers and, and then support and, and fight as far as I'm mean, known to be a fighter. Um, I'll fight to make sure I get the right thing done for our, our children and everyone in Bergen County for their education system. It, it's huge. Thank you. Thank you. Simone Sigonis. I agree with Joan and Ron. Um, education is key. I've taken a lot of my continuing education at Bergen Community College, and it, it is a gem. Um, I'll speak a little bit then on the school, those special services for our um, developmentally challenged um, youth, how important it is for them to, to be uh, part of the of our communities and, and, and involved with the, the towns that they grew up in. So money should be funded towards these schools that involve our vocational or special services or community college um, in whatever way they can. I, I think the pandemic actually probably hit our special service schools a little bit more strongly because of the need of the interaction with, with families. And I, um, as an architect, I feel the trade schools are, are critical. I have a hard time finding a good plumber and an electrician and I'm in the profession. And, you know, four year colleges might not be the right path for um, many students. And we have to advocate and fund these schools that are critical to producing um, students that are gonna give back to our communities. Okay, thank you. The next question, <clears throat> as a freeholder who is responsible for as a check and balance for county funding, what are your thoughts on the current campaign to reallocate police funding? Ronald, we'll start with you. Um, you need it repeated? Uh I will never, I will never, never defund the police department. Um, the safety of our communities um, is of the utmost important. Uh, simple as that. I'm, I said I was, I've been a police commissioner. Um, th that's a, it's a, that's a no stop for me. They will, I'll never defund police. Uh, I will negotiate. I'm actually negotiating two police contracts now as the uh, finance commissioner in Hasbro Kites. I will watch the dollars of our taxpayers' money, um, but the police and the safety of our communities is what you know makes our community what you know um, why people want to live in our in our in our area. It's Bergen County has wonderful communities. Um, the police, I think, some of the police have gotten uh, bad raps on a lot of stuff. I deal with the police department due to all my youth sports programs I'm involved in, and such a large percentage of the police give back to the community, a part of our communities, and that needs to continue. Um, you know, al de de defunding police is, is something I would never even consider talking about. I think uh, that's a, just a, you know, unnecessary even to bring up. Thank you. Thank you. Simone Sigonis. And if you could just repeat the question so I understand totally what the question is. We're starting with a bunch of them about the budget. So, but this first one says, as a freeholder who is responsible for checks and balances for the county, what are your thoughts on the current campaign to reallocate police funding? So um, reallocating police funding, I, I would need to understand, um, I, I, as Ron said, we are, you know, big supporters of our, of our police. We understand that they're, they're they're essential, they put their lives out on the line for us. I think we all can agree. I, I think we would need to understand where the funds would be reallocated or I, I would need a more information in order to better uh, answer the question, but um, it, it's not necessarily defunding the police, it's reallocating funds to go towards another uh, sector, which you know you have to weigh the consequences of 
what the repercussions are on those actions. I don't have enough information to answer the question. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Ramon, Hashe. And I, I just want to point out, I didn't get a chance to uh, respond to the question regarding schools. Uh, it's a very important yeah. topic to me, so yeah. hopefully I'll be given the opportunity to do so. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I completely, absolutely oppose defunding the police. It's an idea that's been floated around. I think it's a terrible idea. You know, as, as commissioners, we are stewards of tax dollars. And we're tasked with a tremendous responsibility. And we need to exercise fiscal responsibility in doing so. I support better training, better skill sets, de-escalation training, more funding for mental health. Uh, the county has increased funding for mental health services. Uh, defunding the police who provide a great service is not the answer. Not only will it not solve the issues, things could actually get worse. Uh, you know, already we're seeing great work by the county uh, in, in realigning the police and, and realizing tax savings. You know, the realignment, uh, for example, the county police and the sheriff's office has saved uh, taxpayers $19 million so far and will save about $250 million over the next 20 years. Okay, thank you. Last, Joan Voss. Thank you. I am a huge supporter of our police force. I was police commissioner in my town for several years and my first project was the fact that we needed a, a state-of-the-art police station because our community was growing. And so I worked very, very hard to get a police station built. One of the things we've worked on at the Bergen County Freeholders is the, to merge, as Ramon said, the county police with the sheriff's department. And as he pointed out, we have already saved $19 million. And uh, we think that over the next 20 years, we will save about $250 million for the taxpayers of Bergen County. And we will have more efficient services for less money. Uh, and so this is very important. I think that um, uh, our police uh, do a great job. And I think that they're really trying at this point to uh, be more, uh, what should I say, aware of needs of people with mental issues and with uh, physical issues. And I think that there's going to be more training so that they will become even more adept at taking care of the citizens of their communities. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ramon, you're right. I, you're at the end of the line and I just missed it. But I'll repeat what the, the previous question, okay? It talks about the Bergen County Special Services School District, talks about students with disabilities, vocational schools, and magnet schools for the high school ability. Do you feel the county funds spent in support of these schools is money well spent? Explain. And investment in education is absolutely the best investment that we can make because it is an investment in our children, in our future. And we need to ensure that we make that investment across the board, that we get help to those students who, who, who have special needs, and that we also uh, set up the, the programs to challenge and, and elevate those, uh, those students who, who, who are also gifted. Uh, it's absolutely money well spent. You know, after the previous administration cut six and a half million dollars in education and Jim Tedesco, Joan uh, and the Democrats and the board restored and increased that funding. I don't know how anyone could cut uh, money from special needs children. Uh, again, it is it is important uh, in my mind. It is absolutely the best investment that we can make. OK, thank you very much. And I am sorry. It wasn't intentional. No thank you. Um, all right. Next question. And. Uh, all right, if you, we're kind of sticking with budget questions here. If you are elected as a freeholder, will you vote for or against budgets that include the funding for the recreation facilities? Would you consider purchasing additional open space? And we'll begin with Simone Sigonis. Open space is important <laughs> to, um, especially now we're realizing that we need more open space for social distancing and in order to maintain our, um, our, our state of mind during this uh, pandemic. Uh, again, it's, uh, I, I guess I have trouble answering these things because I'm always used to kind of wanting to see the, the table and, and, and see where figures are going. And, and just to make myself perfectly clear, I'm totally against defunding the police since we're gonna use that word defunding instead of reallocating. 
funds. Um, so I, I hope nobody misunderstood me on that previous question. Um, yes, I, I would put more money towards open space. We need open space. We need greenery. We need oxygen. It's good for the environment. Um, and it can be done, uh, you know, with better planning. I, I feel this is the, these are the skills that I can add as an architect and Ron with his experience as a um, administrator, we can bring to the board of freeholders our understanding of community planning and better facilities for our uh, constituents. So I, I would support uh, funding um, programs for open space, um, provided that we're not detrimenting or taking money, reallocating funds maybe from the police department to, um, you know, there's got to be a balance. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ramon Hache. Open space is, is something that's uh, very dear to my heart. Uh, when I served on the Ridgewood Council, uh, I was both on the uh, on the Fields Committee and the uh, Parks and Recreation uh, and, and, and Open Space Board. Uh, I also serve on the Bergen County Open Space Trust Fund Advisory Board. And, and the fund is a great asset, which is specifically uh, established to do this, to make that type of investment. You know, we're, we're, we learn more and more when we listen to the science of the benefits of, of getting uh, outdoors, not just for children, but also for older adults, for the entire family. Uh, and I commend the, uh, the county for all the investments they have made so far in so many wonderful facilities, uh, be it the Dinosaur Park, be it the uh, you know, Winter Wonderland of Van uh Park. Uh, and I know the county right now is uh, currently underway uh, looking at a plan to, to make significant improvements to the uh, Wild Duck Pond uh, in my hometown of Ridgewood. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's an investment in, in our well-being. Uh, and making sure that we give uh, our families the opportunity to get out, spend time together, uh, for people to be active, to be healthier, uh, and enjoy uh, a, a higher quality of life uh, in our county. Thank you. Joan Boss. Well, open space is something very near and dear to all the freeholders, and we have made a concerted effort to every year develop more and more activities for the families. We have a million people in Bergen County, and so we have to provide a variety of things. We have things like, uh, as uh, uh, Ramon mentioned, Winter Wonderland, which unfortunately probably won't be open this year, but we have uh, the zoo, which has opened, and I think the animals miss the people as much as the people miss the animals. <laughs> <laughs> and we have six golf courses uh, all over the, the county. And uh, I get a lot of phone calls from people saying, please uh, uh, upscale some of the facilities so that more and more people will use them. My favorite, favorite place is Overpeck Park because we have so many activities, outdoor activities at Overpeck, and it's a wonderful place for all kinds of sports and recreation and things of that sort. Van Sorn Park is another wonderful park. And we really make sure that we provide the facilities that people need, the bike paths, and I'm probably going over, but I can talk about all of the things that we have tried to provide. We wanna make Bergen County the most wonderful place to raise your family and to have a great quality of life. Thank you. And no, you weren't going over time. You were okay. I get carried away. <laughs> Ronald Kistner, up to you. Thank, thank you, and I, I will try not to go over as well. Uh, open space is, is is huge for me. The reason I became the county park director, uh, I guess, was because of my uh, reputation for being involved with youth sports and actually building sports fields. I probably have done more, as a volunteer, more turf fields uh, in Bergen County than anyone. Uh, uh, when I was, was the county park director, I oversaw the renovation of Riverside County Park with the multi-purpose field, the concession stands, and the softball and baseball fields. Overpeck, I was oversaw the installation of the two wood bridges that connected Leonia and Teaneck uh, sections of the park. Um, when I became the parks director, the Overpeck stables was closed and it was costing the county, I think, $25,000 a month. I'm proud under me. I, we got the uh, stables open and now it's one of the best stables in the East Coast. Um, the the uh, rowing and the kayaking docks and the them opening uh, with the Hackensack Riverkeeper was again uh, through the help of Joan and um, Mr. Tedesco and uh, Mr. Tonelli when they were uh, when I was the county parks director they they supported me and endorsed and we really get all those projects done as well um, the events that I, I agree Overpeck Park um, is a wonderful facility and I, I thought I had a little input in getting that to where it is. Uh, we used to hold the Juneteenth celebration there. We held the Bergen County Fall Festival there. 
Uh, we had just wonderful activities and wonderful events there. And I get back on, we will continue, and I will I will do my best to work with the commissioners and the county executive to make continue to make great strides in Bergen County. Thank you. All right. Next question. To your knowledge, what has been the effect of the pandemic on county government services, and how should they be addressed in the next budget? We will start with Ramon Cache. Yeah, I think it's um, it's, it's quite clear that the pandemic has placed some significant burdens on, on the finances of the county. Um, and, and with $162 million from the CARES Act, um, the county has done a tremendous amount of work in uh, not only in, in managing its own operations and having to ensure the protection of, of, of its employees, uh, but also working with, with our families and businesses um, to, to make sure that not only can we get them back on their feet, but that we're uh, providing adequate testing. Uh, the county was uh, had a tremendous program uh, through their leadership, ensuring that 30 mobile testing sites were made available countywide. Uh, these mobile testing sites, we had actually one here in Ridgewood that, that was servicing the, the residents of, of Ridgewood and, and Glen Rock. There were over 35,000 tests administered in total uh, and over 22,000 hours, staff hours that were donated. Uh, you know, and, and I think that looking at what the impact has been so far and how we've dealt with those challenges, I'm very confident that should a second wave of COVID come back, we will be the team that mobilizes the testing sites in the fastest uh, and most effectively, saving both taxpayer money and lives, which are, which are a lot more important than anything else. Uh, and, and I know well, uh, very well what the initial steps that, that were taken uh, to, 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 to keep us on track and um, I think that we, you know, looking forward, we're going to be doing with, dealing with these issues uh, in the best way possible. Thank you. All right, thank you. Just want to reiterate that the, the the question is about the pandemic and how it can the issues that it's brought up can be ad addressed in the next budget, the upcoming budget. Joan Voss. Well, I think I addressed some of the questions before because we have done tremendous work with Newbridge Hospital uh, to bring um, the services that the pandemic has caused us to have to provide. And uh, one of the things that we are number one, our number one priority is human safety. And one of the things that we have tried to help uh, people in, in Bergen County who are kind of uh, in difficult positions, we provide services uh, to take them to doctor's appointments. We take provide services to um, uh, take them to the VA. We provide services to deliver. One of the things I'm really um, uh, very involved with is Meals on Wheels, because with this pandemic, that has become a very big priority. And uh, uh, we have provided things like, I guess, sometimes as many as 10,000 meals a week uh, to people who for various reasons have health issues and, and things. And uh, the, the clients, uh, it, it's free of charge. I mean, it's because if pe people need the food, we provide the food. And um, uh, it, it's very important. Number one priority in the, in the county is human safety and make sure that everybody has enough to eat, everybody can get to their doctor's appointments, everybody is uh, has a place where they can make a call so that they can feel safe. And that's one of the many services we provide on the county level that we give help and hope. Thank you. Next, Ronald Kistner, sorry. No problem, thank you. Um, this is gonna be a political, and it's gonna be a, a, a human interest, you know, you can't consider. You can't foresee what the pandemic is going to cause next. Um, again, we have to be there to service and help the people as is needed. Saying that, we need to make sure we work together with the county executive and support the medical groups and the medical experts on what our best way to support these financially. Uh, you know, we can't just waste the money, but we got to make sure the funds are there when we when we're shown what is needed. We need to agree as a committee, as a freeholder committee, and then put together our heads and work to get those funds available and, and needed to the people and make sure we help the people. This isn't, you know, a, you say a budget question, you know, okay, what's this going to cost? That's going to cost. We're all, we're human. We're at the mercy of this, this horrible pandemic. Um, you know, God willing, we, we've seen the worst of it and 
you know, vaccine is found and we can get back to normal life. But as Joan said, the most important thing, whatever comes our way is to work together and be there for the, the individuals who are, are more receptive to getting, you know, being sick. Uh, stay strong, stay smart and work together to make it better for the overall people of Bergen County and everyone else. Thank you. Thank you. Simone Sigonis. Yes, so even from what I've seen with Ron's position, um, he was always running around delivering personal protective equipment to first responders. So I think one of the effects the pandemic had was with it spread thin our um, services to our our first responders, our firemen, our, our police, our our vets, our vulnerable people, um, not just our seniors, but um, our developmentally challenged um, youngsters. So I think what we need to do is, uh, like Ron said, pull together, know what resources were spread very thin during this time, and, and build that up, build a surplus so that we become more resilient. Should the next pandemic, which is inevitable, it will happen again, but we'll better be prepared. We'll, we'll build resiliency by working together and, and building up the resources that we were so desperately spread thin uh, during, you know, let us learn. If, if there's one silver lining over this pandemic, it's that it, it has to teach us something, but we have to make sure we've, we're learning from it and um, provide, uh, strengthen uh, what was weakened during this term in our next budget. Thank you. Next question. The YWCA Northern New Jersey has created programming to bring in experts in the critical areas of climate change, gun violence, sufficient income to support families, health care, and caring for aging parents and seniors. Which one of these areas is crucial and important and a priority to you? If need be, I can repeat them again. We're talking about uh, climate change, gun violence, sufficient income to support families, health care, caring for aging parents and seniors. Joan, we're starting with you. Okay. Well, being a senior, you know what <laughs> priority is for me. Um, we have so many services at, on the um, county level that maybe many people aren't aware of. And one of them is uh, to give some respite to caregivers. We have a tremendous number of people who want to stay in their homes and they may have a caregiver or a family member who uh, you know, takes make sure that they can stay in their home. And this is very important. And it's a very important to me because um, so many of the COVID cases, I'm, I'm just digressing a little bit, were people who were in um, these senior citizen homes and about 60% of the people who passed away were people who were in these long-term health facilities. Mm -hmm. And so I'm all for you know making sure that people can stay at home and have the services that they need to continue to, to stay there. Um, I'm sorry, it was senior citizens and what was the other one? Oh, there were many. I know. Climate change, gun violence. Uh, one after senior citizens. Oh, after senior, it said caring for aging parents and seniors. That, okay, well, that kind of ties into what I just said. Yeah. Um, certainly, um, we have to be very aware of um, the, the fact that uh, the climate uh, has been kind of crazy lately and we have to be prepared, you know, for um, like a, we're going into the hurricane season now and we have um, uh, less year, uh, we didn't really have a cold winter. I mean, so people have got to be adaptable and flexible and know where to go when they need help. If we get snowstorms, the county is always prepared to make sure everybody has salt. <laughs> okay. okay, Joan, thank you very much. Sorry. Next, Ron, Ron Kistner. Again, um, you know, we had uh, that question because the why is the one supporting us. So, you know. Uh, it, it, I think it's a great question. Um, I give you a little personal issue. Um, the re one of the reasons I'm running for office, and I, and I do so much volunteer work, is um, I lost my mom. I was the youngest of five. I lost my mom at four years old. My mm -hmm. father grew up in Jersey City. My father raised five of us. Um, and I've had the privilege over the years now to work for some very wealthy individuals, great people. No one's greater than my dad was. My dad raised five of us. He was a truck driver for the Hudson County. He used to work at the hospital in Sea Caucus. Then he worked two other jobs after that. He'd leave the house six in the morning, 
come home 11 o'clock at night after either at the funeral home, uh, John L. Burke Funeral Home on Palisade Avenue or bartending at the uh, Heights Bar in, on Palisade Avenue. Um, and I was, oh, Dad, you're never home. And then I realized he was never home because he was taking care of five of us and making sure we had food on the table and a roof over our head. Uh, we didn't own a house. We didn't even own a car. Um, so family income uh, is, is is so important, I believe. Second um, a comment I, I couldn't leave without is the taking care of seniors. As I said, I didn't have the chance of having a mom. And my dad died. I was 20, 22. And I lost my dad. Um, I am privileged enough to have a mother-in-law who's 95, a tough little lady from the Bronx. She's wonderful. Uh, she supports me when I, my wife yells at me. And But I see what her and her friends go through. And you, you can, like a town, a country, a community is only as strong as we take care of our seniors. Um, so that's one of the reasons. That, and I want to do this kind of stuff just to give back. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Simone Sigonis. And I agree, seniors top priority. The seniors are the ones that are gonna educate us as to gun violence and climate change and all of the other issues because they know they've been there. When you want advice, you don't go to a 17 year old, you go to somebody that's more seasoned and has the experience. I, I feel seniors are, um, as an architect, what I see when, when senior housing is put away, from their communities and located in distant areas. You don't do that. You need to integrate seniors back into the community because they're a valuable investment um, for our towns, for our children. Uh, there's nothing more than, than a child uh, enjoys better than spending time with their grandparents, as Ron is very well aware of. I, I, I think that would be my top choice. It's a very difficult choice. All of those topics are extremely important, but I would um, emphasize the importance of caring for our seniors. Okay, thank you. Ramon? And this is probably the uh, the toughest question just because there's there's no simple choice. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about the pandemic, but what you've li listed for us, these are all national epidemics. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't think it's just one. And I, I think, you know, as elected officials, we don't get to choose uh, the, the issues that we want. You know, we get presented with many issues and we have to address all of them. These are all incredibly important. And I look forward to addressing them all uh, just by, by way of background. Uh, a lot of the work that I did um, while serving in, in Ridgewood was focusing on on age friendly uh, and and coming up with solutions for for our, for our, our older adults to to age in place. Uh, as a result, we were recognized by the AARP as one of only 31 uh, cities in in New Jersey to receive it, that, that the recognition for for all the work that we did uh, in doing so. Very important to us. Obviously, gun violence. Uh, mm -hmm. is, 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 is wreaking havoc on our society. And there has to be a better way for us to be able to provide a safer environment uh, for our families, for our children. Uh, these are all, again, incredible issues, and I look forward to, to addressing them all uh, on, the, uh, on the commission. Okay, thank you very much. Next question. ICE detainees are housed in the county jail. This has been a source of income for the county but other counties are beginning to review the policy. What are your thoughts on the justification of holding immigrants as prisoners in our facility? Ronald, we start with you. Um, again, I support police and I support uh, legal activity. Uh, if, if someone's illegal and they're um, at the, uh, brought into the uh, sheriff's or the prison, um, they should be addressed um, appropriately. Um, as I said, you know, I don't need to know all the answers. I need to have people around me that I trust hmm. and I, I believe their opinion. Um, so if the sheriff's department or the people who are, are educated in legal serve systems um, advises me that it's the, the right thing to do, I will ask my questions and I will support it appropriately. Uh, again, um, it, it, they can always show you always sort of one, you know, the sad story. Oh, the poor, hardworking individual. But there's also the individual who might have done wrong to the, you know, someone's family. And if that's your family, you wouldn't want them out. Uh, it's no cut and dry answer. Oh, they should be let out or it should be all they should be going. Um, you talk to the, you, you have people you trust in those positions. They're tough positions and tough decisions need to be made. And you, if, when they need our assistance, we should be there. We should be able to ask the questions. We should have a good relationship with them. We don't always have to agree with them, 
but we need to make answers. And uh, as Ramon said, as a public official, you got to make tough decisions sometimes, and that's definitely one of them. But you need to have and you need to support the people you put in those positions to do that do their job. Thank you. Simone Sigonis. I, I agree with Ron. They're um, they're detained. Where what, what is the alternative? Where else would we put them? Um, what we, what can we look at facilities wise where they can um, be healthy, be you know uh, held, but yet treated fairly? Um, again, the information is needs to be discussed with the authorities involved as to to what the alternatives are if the county prison is the place where we can keep them now and, and keep everybody safe uh, as they're being held, then that would be the, the designated facility. But unless there is an alternative to be discussed, um, it, it would be, um, again, more information is needed to be brought to the table so that you have a, a, a meeting of the minds as to where the best place to, to house these people are while they're being detained. Thank you. Ramon? Yeah, and I just want to point out that this, this is not a contract with the uh, the freeholder board. So this is not uh, a choice uh, that, would, that would be in front of, uh, of the commission. Uh, but I, I, I do have to point out that the Trump administration's policies regarding immigration are deplorable and inhumane. And atrocities like separating families at the border, for example. Dreamers deserve the opportunity for a better life. And as an immigrant myself, Immigration is very important to me, and while, while we would all like to send the message by canceling the contract, we would actually be hurting the, de the detainees at, the, at these facilities. They are better off being at our facility, where they are close to home, to their families and loved ones, and legal representation, instead of going to a for-profit facility farther away where the conditions and treatment are bad. Um, I, I think it's very important that, that, that we worry about making sure that those, those detainees are, treat, are treated with dignity and, and respect, regardless of the reasons why they're being detained. I think is that we, have, we have to take a look at the conditions and to make, make sure that, that we treat them uh, the best way possible. Okay, thank you. Joan, Moss. Well, I think we all agree that we need uh, immigration reform, but I have to say that um, from what I have learned, uh, a large percentage of the uh, immigrants that are detained have some criminal um, actions pending against them, or they're in the process of being uh, deported. And so just as a point, because I've read up quite a lot on, on the different facilities that the immigrants are kept in, uh, Bergen County is like heaven compared to many of the other facilities. Uh, we provide good medical care, uh, excellent food, good accommodations. And as Ramon pointed out, um, if they were not in Bergen County Jail, they might be sent someplace out of the state or up to upstate New York where they wouldn't have an opportunity to have the legal uh, um, people that they need or to be close to their family. So um, if I guess you could say that we are the best of the worst worlds in, in the sense that you know we treat the immigrants very, very fairly. And as I said, it's not the freeholders, the contract is with the sheriff's department. Yeah, that's what Ramon said too. I know. Well, <laughs> Thank you. You read the same things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next question, and we've kind of hit about some of this. So if you want to just say we've already talked about it, that's fine. But it, the question is, please address how you would better combat the hundreds of COVID-19 cases in senior care housing and veterans housing throughout Bergen County. I know we talked about COVID and we talked about it, but this is specific about in the nursing homes and in the uh, veterans uh, facilities. And we'll start with Simone. Um, proper planning. Um, I, I would say, again, just as, as, as an architect, you know, ventilation systems, I think things need to be looked at. Um, the, the people are responsible for their actions, yes, but we should try to outfit our buildings so uh, they can be retrofitted um, with new mechanical ventilation systems that can help um, alleviate, um, you know, a, a lot of the, the, the stagnant air, have, have more air changes. Um, you know, our, 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 our veterans are our, our bravest, our, our heroes, and, and the, the people in our nursing homes are 
our seniors who are, are well respected. So we deserve to uh, upgrade their facilities um, so that it meets the expectations of when this next pandemic can hit and will hit probably at some point again and who knows when um, with the strains changing. But I, I know as, as an architect, we can retrofit a lot of our existing buildings to make them safer. So I think we can start looking at um, our existing infrastructure and improving on that as well as proper cleaning and, and maintaining of these buildings. Okay, thank you. Ramon? Thank you, Anne. I think it's important to note that these facilities are state run. Mm. Uh, but however, our, our Department of Health in the county uh, does assist uh, with best practices. And I would hope the state government will use the resources of our health department uh, to assist them in any way possible to make these facilities safer uh, and to ensure that we can provide a better quality of life for, for its residents. Um, but again, just because it's not in our purview doesn't mean that we cannot have those discussions with, with our colleagues at the state level. And what I plan to do is to advocate uh, and, and have those conversations and reach out uh, and to make sure that we elevate uh, these issues and that they're addressed accordingly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Joan? Well, when I was down in Trenton, I had an opportunity to work with many of the unions that were caregivers in these long-term facilities. And I have to say that the work they do is unbelievable and the salaries they re they receive are unforgivable. Mm -hmm. And if we want to keep our seniors safe and we have to give them the best quality of care and you can't get the best quality of care if you're not willing to pay for it. And so I have been a big advocate for this. And um, um, at, at my age, I would not want to go into one of these long-term, you know, facilities. I would much rather, you know, be at home with uh, someone who can look after me. Because as I said to you in a previous question, 60 or more percent of the people who died from COVID were in these nursing homes. Okay. Thank you. I will fight. <laughs> Ron? Uh, this, you know, as Ron said, if they're state run, that's fine. But one of the reasons I'm running, I, I'm hoping to get on is to help people that can't help themselves. I, I told you a little bit of my history. Um, I really consider my blessed to, I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in. And I, I've been known to be a fighter. I actually did some amateur boxing over the years. And these are the kind of things I do want to help the people that can't help themselves. Um, I do spend a lot of time down the Hasbro Heights VFW these are men that you know, they don't make them like that anymore. They're terrific individuals. The country is what it is because of these people. And I, quite honestly, I, I, I don't care if it's under my authority or not. I will go to the people whose authority it is under to make sure accountability. I'll put people's feet to the fire. I'll do it respectfully at first, but if I have to roll up my sleeves, I'll roll up my sleeves. And I, um, I know I have the support of every, every individual who's, on the, all four of us would be the same way. You wouldn't be doing what we're doing, asking to be in this position if we weren't. But uh, there's no doubt about it. The, the, the veterans and the seniors, um, this is what we do this for, is to help the people who can't help themselves, who deserve us to be there and do what we got to do for them. Um, as I said, I support the people who are the educator or the police. I'll, I'll support the people that run the nursing home and the senior centers too. But if they I'll, I'll be damned if they do something wrong to those kind of to those individuals, they'll hear from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question. <clears throat> Once a safe, effective vaccine for COVID-19 becomes available, what role, if any, should Bergen County play to assure that it is readily available, is, especially to those who are at most at risk? Ramon, we start with you. Yeah, I think, you know, we, uh, up until now, obviously, we've been talking about ways to, to contain and stop the spread of the virus. Um, but if, you know, when the time does come that, um, that we will have a vaccine, you know, mm -hmm. while now the focus is on testing and protective equipment and social distancing, uh, I think it is crucial for the county to start to deploying uh, its, its assets uh, through, through the medical facilities in Newbridge, uh, but to ensure that we have the proper funding in place uh, to have uh, this vaccine available to all Bergen County residents. Um, you know, we, we, we need to, 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 to leverage those resources that we have now. Uh, you know, I, I foresee uh, the county being able to utilize 
It's mobile uh, testing units, uh, hopefully for the purpose of administering the vaccine. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, it would be top priority to make sure that everyone in the county uh, can, get, can get access to the vaccine and uh, we can cut through the red tape uh, and, and to make sure that everyone is, uh, is, is being protected. Thank you. Joan Voss. Well, I think at the cost of many, many uh, medications is uh, really uh, horrible. And I think that the federal government will make the vaccine when it becomes available free of charge. At least I, I listen to politics all day. I'm, I'm a political you know, junkie. And uh, I, the people who need the vaccine, the, the elderly, people in low income groups, minority groups that have very big health uh, issues, underlying health issues, they have to get it for nothing. It, it, they can't charge people for something that's going to keep us alive. And um, it, God forbid, but we may have another wave. Some countries are experiencing a second wave at this point. If and when, I mean, I want to make sure that the vaccine has been vetted properly. But, uh, you know, I, I hope that it will be available as soon as possible. But I don't think that because of a pandemic that it should be uh, something that uh, is going to cost the average person an arm and a leg. It has to be, you know, um, made available uh, to everyone because everyone, regardless, we see it doesn't make any difference how rich you are or how poor you are. You are vulnerable. Thank you. Ron? It, it's, um, I'm going to sound like the campaign manager for County Executive Tedesco. Uh, I see the way Jim handles um, getting the treatment, the testing out and everything else. Uh, I think he'd be hands-on and I like hands-on approach it, when the vaccine was came available. Uh, again, it'd be marketing, getting the word out that it's safe, meeting with the experts, uh, which I'm sure he would do and would get the freeholders or the commissioners involved, uh, discuss it, the cost, the funds, um, but getting it out in, in a process. I mean, I would, I want to, I would want to do the first responders, the teachers, the people on the front line, uh, right after that, the seniors and the people who have more chance of getting sick. Um, I, I turned 60, so I guess I'm almost in that category of, I keep thinking I'm 30, but I'm 60 now. But uh, I, I don't need to get in front of the line of anybody else. Yeah, I want to make sure the the people that we talked about in the past, who, who, the reason we do this is to help the people that can't help themselves, make sure it's available for them. So yeah, the, we can't, this can't be, the cost is the cost. And I'm not you know saying that we write a blank check. But whatever the cost is, we put we make sure the state representatives and the national people that are elected officials, we, we, we meet them and we let them know how we feel about it. But the process is going to be proper marketing because you already hear people if there's I'm not going to get it. Well, that's, you know, kind of that's counterproductive. Um, but to the marketing, get make sure it's safe and then f follow the right process, get it to the people who need it first and, uh, you know, er and do it the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Simone. And, uh, and consult with, um, with our medical uh, teams, our hospitals, our doctors, our scientists uh, as to who and when and how it can be, um, you know, distributed um, because it's, it's an imperative that we don't overstress the system just like we did when the lockdown happened so that we don't overstress our emergency rooms with, uh, to provide ventilators for for people that that were in need of them, um, and, and to, to find out when herd immunity might be established, so that enough people are inoculated, that not everybody has to be inoculated. So it, it's a combination of discussions between the scientists and the doctors and the hospitals. Um, uh, you know, I, I yes, the county and the state have to be involved, but you know, without the experts telling us what to do and and how to. Um, uh, what not to promise and what to promise, we really need to make sure we have a, a, a meeting of the minds. Thank you. Next question. A growing concern among voters, nationally, statewide, and locally, is climate change. The New Jersey Transit Grid Power Plant to be made in the Meadowlands has potential consequences of higher air and water pollution in Bergen County towns. Towns such as Leonia, Fort Lee, and Glen Rock have already opposed the plan. As freeholder, would you support or oppose 
funding for the New Jersey Transit Grid Power Plant. Explain. Joan, you're first. Well, I'm always very concerned about uh, these power plants, grids, uh, lines uh, that are going to transport fuel and things of this sort, because I'm so afraid that they're going to endanger the environment. And so usually I'm not very happy with them. I mean, we need to totally revamp our power grid in this section of the country. If you remember a few years ago, we had a huge blackout and uh, they said we need to really fix things up and we really haven't done that much. And we have problems with different towns because once they want to put a power plant in one town, the next town wants to sue them because they claim that their air is being polluted. And so we have to be very careful. I, I, I'm very big on solar energy and wind energy and things that are not going to endanger the environment. But it's very difficult because even when you want to put a wind farm up, people say, oh, it's blocking my view. Or if you want to put solar panels, it's ruining the way my house looks and stuff. So it's very, very difficult. But we do have to think of alternative means of providing energy. And I, I think that most people in Bergen County and in New Jersey don't want a power plant in their backyard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do we do? Okay. We sue is what we do. <laughs> All right, Ron, you're next. Thank you. Um, as I said before, but I, I've learned that as I got older, I've learned one thing. I don't need to know everything. I need to put people around that I trust that do know it. I would be totally against this for the very simple reason. Some of the, I met some great people. I became the parks director, including Joan. Uh, but I also met Don Torino, who's head of the Audubon Society, Bill Sheen, who's the Hackensack Riverkeeper. And they're, these are knowledgeable people about this stuff. And if they're against it, again, I trust, I, I, I make certain people I trust. I keep a small group. They're against it. I'm against it. And I will support them. I'll stand with them side by side and fight this. I've already heard that they're against it and that's all I need to know. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, it's amazing because before I was got into government, I was, I worked for a developer and I was always, Oh, don't worry about it. Bill, you know, you, you know, your tree huggers stop. Don't worry about that stuff. And I was blessed to have, when I became the park director. I learned so much about Monarch butterflies and, you know, right in Overpeck, you're, you're 10 minutes from the George Washington bridge and you had the bald eagles and it's so scenic and it's so peaceful. Um, yeah, there's got to be a check. Yeah, everything comes in checks and balances. Yeah, we need power. We need, you know, utilities. But there's got to be, as Joan said, places like an oasis like Overpeck Park. And it's pretty close to it down, you know, where, where they're looking to do this down on the west side of, you know, North Bergen area. So, yeah, no, I would I give you my answer right there. I'm, I'd be against it and I would stand with the people side by side who's, who are fighting it. Thank you. All right. Simone. Um, I would need to listen to the people again. We're, you know, we're elected to, to listen to the people and, and, and promote their interests um, for the good of our communities. Uh, the, this is our backyard. I don't have enough information on that to be able to um, say what, whether or not I would support it or not support it, but I, I don't think you can, you know, um, ethically make a decision to do something that's not acting in the best interests of our community. So I, I would want to represent whatever our constituents' um, thoughts are and advocate for their quality of life. Okay, thank you very much. Ramon. Uh, yes, although as, uh, as, as Joan mentioned, you know, we do have aging infrastructure uh, in, in our uh, energy grid. And New Jersey Transit, you know, needs to run more efficiently. Uh, this has to be done responsibly. We have to protect our environment. Um, I want to ensure that we see a plan where we can see we can use more uh, more renewables. Uh, it's it's so important that, that again that, that we go back to the environment. Energy is a very important issue, but it has to be done responsibly. We can't do it on the backs uh, of of the quality of life of our citizens. And uh, you know, wherever possible, we, we have to be looking at plans. Or we can actually uh, set apart more land for conservation um, than, than than for large scale projects. Uh, so so again, for me, I understand the need, uh, but it would have to be done responsibly. I would have to look at a plan that that, that would ensure that we can get to, to the desired effect of, of having an, uh, the, the energy that we need and improvement in the in the grids, but that it's done cleanly 
uh, and is respectful of the environment. All right, thank you very much. Next question. In light of recent, recent demonstrations for racial equalities, what actions can Bergen County take to ensure safety for all of its citizens? Ron, we start with you. Thank you. Communicate, meet and communicate. Um, as I saw when we first started this you know, uh, forum, um, I'm, all, I'm old school. Go back to, um, you know, meet the people. Don't, don't, don't just go with the people that agree with you. You know what's a great way? Talk to the people that you don't agree with. Yeah. Uh, and see where you disagree and where you can agree and come together. I, it, you know, oh, I don't like, you know, just because I might disagree with you or anybody else here on a subject, it doesn't mean I don't like you anymore. It seems like today we get, well, you, you don't, you like this. And that means I don't like that. So I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And that means we're not friends. That's where, that's why we are where we are today. You know, people have to communicate. People have to, you know, reach out and, and it's not, it's a pretty simple concept. You know, you know, if someone's disagreeing with me, meet, talk to me about it. You might disagree with me after, you might still disagree. We might agree to disagree, but at least we talked. Now, these days, it's, I'm not talking to them. I'm, so, again, I'm, this is great. We're doing this social media stuff. I think social media sometimes is our worst enemy because, you know, the guy, can, the women, they can be tough, but they can be tough guys on, you know, this sort of thing. You know, the way I grew up was, you have something to say to me, come see me and we'll talk about it. And that's the way we should still be doing things. Not go on social media, put false things up, put bad videos on. How about put some good videos on? Show people working together instead of burning or fighting or this one doing this. That That's a simple, go back to being the way we should be. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, Simone. Yes, I agree with Ron, engage with your community. Um, find out what is wrong, uh, you know, talk about things. I think the, the biggest issue is um, a lot of people don't feel like they have a voice. Um, they have a voice, they just don't know. Uh, we're not giving them opportunities to use it in, in a civil way. Um, protesting is a protest, whether it's peaceful or uh, whatever, or a rally, it's still a protest and, and, it, and it usually ends up causing destruction. And I, I think um, rather than advocating for um, those types of marches, we should be um, advocating for, for, for conversations and getting people together. I think the more respect that um, people have for each other, uh, things like this won't happen. I mean, destruction of property happens from people just not really um, having any sort of deep understanding of the uh, or equity of what, how it was built or, or who was engaged in the process. So if we engage everyone in, in a, I know it sounds um, kind of uh, like we, we, too hopeful, but I do believe that we can engage our constituents through um, through equitable discussions and, um, and, and bring, bring their voices so that they're heard and um, bring them to the table, bring the underrepresented voices out, and that's our job as on the as commissioners. Okay, thank you very much, Ramon. And as, as a minority myself, it, this is a very very important issue for me. Hate has no home in Bergen County. I think that that's a very important um, statement that, that we need to make. And it's not just about the actions of bad actors. We, we you know we see that unfortunately all the time. But it is also the inaction of good people who stand by and do nothing. And, and I think that that almost makes you complicit in your silence. I am proud to stand by and support leaders and young people uh, who are speaking out. I am also proud to join my voice with theirs and strengthen this movement. You know, I am so proud of the diversity in Bergen County. We have large minority communities and we should always celebrate our diversity, which makes us so strong and unique. We need a diverse set of leaders. We need diversity on the board. The leadership in government needs to resemble its constituents. We want to be representative of everyone who makes up Bergen County. And as leaders, we do have the responsibility to help bring people together. And unfortunately, right now, we have a president who seems more keen on dividing than uniting people. I don't have as much influence as he does, but in my power as a county official, I will always work towards uniting our communities and empowering those who feel their voice is not being heard. I want to make this world better, not just for my children, uh, but all our children. And we have to be very careful because when we talk about this, 
the questions about racial equality. You know, we, we, we cannot attack the, the, the protesters for exercising uh, their right to protest. Uh, it, it, so, so we need to be careful with that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Joan? One of my favorite topics, knowledge is power. And this is one of the things that we have got to do is educate uh, the kids in school, starting at the very lowest grades, that everybody is special. Everybody needs a place. One of the things I did, I love teaching, was that when somebody would come in, my town had over 60 different nationalities, all, every kind of religion. Fort Lee is a very you know, um, uh, interesting town. And when somebody would come in from a different country, I would always want them to say, what would you like us to know about your country? Or what would you like us to know about your religion? I had kids who were Zoroastrianists. Nobody ever heard of Zoroastrianists, but now everybody likes Zoroastrianists. And so <laughs> you teach people about your culture. Now, one of the wonderful things that we do here in the county, and as I said, we can do this so easily. We can integrate these things into our history classes and we can integrate these things into our uh, art classes. I mean, I wrote curriculum for many years and you can integrate anything into every single subject if you want to teach ethics and values and things of that sort. You know, and you don't say today we're going to learn ethics. You just, you know, incorporate it into it. On the county level, we celebrate diversity. We have hundreds of flag raisings. One of the things I miss is that we bring to people to celebrate Polish American Day, uh, all kinds of Korean holidays. And so everybody learns about everybody. And when you know about other cultures, you say, gee, we may be different in some ways. I'm sorry, I get carried away. <laughs> we may be different, but we're all the same. We love our family. We love our country. And we just love the society that we live in as long as everybody respects everybody. And I'm sorry, this is my passion. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't say that that was the last question we have time for. All right. I'd like to thank the candidates and I'd like to thank also thank those residents that submitted questions. Obviously there were more, more questions were submitted than we had time for due to our available limited time frame. An attempt was made to consolidate questions wherever possible. We will now have the candidates' closing statements, beginning with Ronald Kistner. Thank you, and, and, and thank you for the job you did. And Barbara, thank you for your committee for doing this. Um, I'll be honest, uh, I'm not a great public speaker, I don't think. I'm more of a doer and action guy than talking about things. Uh, I'll give you a couple of funny stories. As I said before, I, I grew up in Jersey City. My father was a committeeman on Webster Avenue uh, for 37 years. We were Democrats. Uh, we didn't have Republicans in Jersey, I don't think. They were, you know, it was just, you, you won the primary, you got the election. Um, and my, when I got elected to the Hasbro Kites Council as Republican, uh, I said my older sister uh, came and she said, Daddy, be so proud of you. He wouldn't have voted for you, but he'd be proud of you. Uh, and that just leads me to think, you know, I guess the way elections go, you know, we have Republicans, we have Democrats from, I would say, September to November, and yeah, we do things like this. Um, but bottom line, when the, we, whoever gets elected, when we get sworn in January, we work for all the residents. We work for everybody in Burn County, and we work together as the freeholder committee or the com uh, commissioners, whatever it is. It, it's counterproductive. We don't work together, and that's my goal to do that, to work together. Um, again, as I said, both my children coach. I coached for a lot of years. I was the president of several sports organizations, including the Metal Ends Junior Football League. I think what sports teaches you, yeah, you're going to have diversity. You're going to have different types of things, but you got to want. Yeah, yeah. I always tell the kids, you know, when you walk out of here, you don't get along. That's fine. You come on my field. We're a team, and you play as a team, and you work together as a team. And sometimes you sacrifice for the team, but you do what's better, the best for the team. And the idea is to work together as a commission and whatever. It, and we do what's best for the residents of Bergen County. Um, and it, again, it, even if, if Simone and myself got on, you know, we'll still be in the minority up there. It'd be, I'd be, it'd be wrong of us to. I'm not going to vote no just because I'm on the other party. You work. We're not a party. We're together as a commission, and we work together with ideas to work together to make Bergen County the best place it can be. And that's what my my, my hope is to do. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. And thanks, Ramon, Joan, and Simone. Uh, this is really terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Joan Voss. 
Thank you so much. This is one of the things I really, really enjoy because I think it's so important for people to meet the candidates, to hear about the services and, and the opportunities that are available to them. Uh, tonight, my running mate, Ramon Hache, and I offered a vision of our future that we believe will deliver opportunities and strengthen the quality of life in this county where children will be able to grow up healthy and safe communities and receive a great education, where our seniors can age in place and enjoy their golden age, their golden years with their families. And that was an things I emphasized during the course of the evening. We celebrate our diversity. We honor our brave service veterans and ensure that they will have access to opportunities and good health care at home. During these challenging times, we have seen enormous hardship. I'll never stop fighting to make sure testing is easily acceptable to everybody and everyone gets the help they need, especially when we get a vaccine. We also see the best of Bergen County in the dedication, selflessness of our frontline healthcare workers and first responders and residents and businesses donating food to help their neighbors in many, many ways. This is why Bergen County is strong. And no matter what the struggle, we come together to support each other, just like we have spoken about this evening. We value family, we value community, we value the services that we can give to our fellow citizens. As long as we continue to come together, we will secure a strong, promising future for all of us. I hope Ramon and I can count on your support. Please remember to mail in your ballots or drop them in a secure drop box. And um, uh, this has been a, an experience. I think you ladies did a wonderful job. And I think it was fun having a virtual debate. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. I would like to make one more thing, and I shouldn't say this, but I, I want to thank my great friend and colleague, David Gans, who is retiring this year. I've run with him four times. And um, we will miss his wisdom and his political expertise. And I think that he has done a fantastic job and deserves our thanks. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ramon Hache. Thank you, Anne, for a great job moderating uh, tonight. And thank you to the members of the public for taking the time to listen to us tonight. Thank you to all the candidates for stepping up to serve. I know very well the work and sacrifice it entails. So thank you. And as everyone can gather during these challenging times, uh, Bergen County is dealing with many important and significant issues. This has been a very difficult year for all of us. And while we're not out of the woods yet, Bergen County is on the right path. After being dealt a very tough hand, thanks to the great work of our residents, our frontline workers and leaders, like my running mate, freeholder Joan Boss, who listened to science and took swift, decisive action to keep people safe and are continuing to make sure we can reopen safely and support our communities and small businesses. As mayor, I, I saw how deadly this deadly virus affected my community, and I worked closely with the county to get help quickly to those who needed it. And as a freeholder, I'll keep fighting to stop the spread of the virus and help our families and businesses get through this and back on their feet. And I'll always fight to make sure our families have the opportunities they need to succeed. Bergen County is a great place to raise a family and I'm eager to work hard for you to make it even better. And I'll be remiss if I didn't take the time to thank the Dean of the Freeholder Board, David Gans. I'm very grateful for his faithful and dedicated service to the residents of Bergen County, particularly to our county's veterans. And I'd like to wish him the best on his retirement. And David, I promise to continue your great work. I want to thank everyone for your time. Thank you for being engaged and caring about the issues. And with your help, I hope to be working alongside Freeholder Joan Boss for you at the county level and continuing the outstanding work of the current board. Be safe, God bless, and good night. Thank you. Simone Sigonis. Thank you, Anne. As um, I'm sure I learned from this evening, as I'm sure the public learned from this evening, that we agree on the same issues. Uh, and I think that's the unique thing about um, Ron and myself, is we are wanting to come to the table to, to help. We want to offer our unique perspectives. Ron, as an administrator um, and councilman, myself as an architect and former councilwoman, uh, can offer some insight into different aspects of um, the arena where we can all fight for the same issue 
there um, is, is no politics involved when it comes to people and, and community and smart growth. We have to start from the premise, as I always start every architecture project, that um, you have to engage your constituents. They know what's best for their communities and uh, we have to help implement their plans. So we want to be their voice. We don't wanna have our own voices, but we want to represent their interests and just offer our perspective so that we all fight for the greater good of our constituents. And, and God willing, uh, it will bring people together so this country will be indivisible and will be proud of the fact that all of us have really immigrated here from different areas. And um, let's bring back that patriotism that our parents instilled in us to our youth so that the country can grow stronger in their eyes. And as Joan has done so excellently with her educational skills, um, which I admire very much, let's, let's fight for the future generation. And um, Ron and I are, are willing and ready and able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you found this event an informative one. Streaming of this recorded candidates forum will be available on YWCA's YouTube, the YWCA North New Jersey's Facebook page, and the League of Women Voter Bergen, the League of Women Voter of Bergen County's Facebook page. I would like to remind you that the November election in New Jersey will all be vote by mail. All active Registered voters in New Jersey will receive or already have received their vote by mail ballots. There is no need to apply for a vote by mail ballot. If a voter does not receive a vote by mail ballot, the voter may vote using a provisional ballot at the polls on election day. If you do not receive your vote by mail ballot by October 13th, contact the Bergen County election clerk <coughs> at 201 336 7020. Please follow the instructions on the ballot carefully. Sign the certificate, but do not detach it. Plan to complete your ballot and return it as soon as possible. It must be postmarked by November 3rd, election day. Secure ballot drop boxes will be located throughout Bergen County. Call the Bergen County's Board of Elections at 201-336-6225 for the location of these drop boxes. For detailed voting information, visit vote411.org and lwbnj.org. If you have any questions or voting concerns, call 1-800-792-VOTE. Thank you. Thank you. How do we do? <laughs> Thank you and good night, everyone. Uh, we'll be closing out um, tonight's uh, forum. We'll be putting links in the comments here with all the key information about where to access the voting information that Andrew shared, and um, we and also information about the League of Women Voters and all the other uh, supporting agencies. Um, thank you again to the candidates for making the time and for moderating, Barbara, for joining us uh, to partner on this event and all the other sponsoring agencies and have a wonderful evening. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.